What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be telling you five things that runners should focus on that aren't running. I will also be telling you of these five things, those of which that I do and those that I don't do or probably should do or at least do better. And this is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I wanna hear about your successes and I definitely wanna hear about those setbacks. So perhaps, perhaps you are a new runner and you're thinking, I wanna get better at running and to do that, I am just going to run all the time. I'm gonna build my volume, I'm gonna build my speed, I'm just gonna follow a plan or maybe not follow a plan and I'm gonna get better. And I've already seen a lot of improvement. And guys, this works. This does work, but it only works up to a certain extent. Once you get to a certain level, you might find that you need to do something else to make yourself a better runner. Now, I'm gonna make an assumption that you are probably not a professional runner. I certainly am not a professional runner, but that doesn't mean that I don't wanna be as good as I can be. Although saying that, professional runners are going to follow a lot of these tips. So don't think that they're not good enough for everyone. They really are. The first one, probably the most important, and that is sleep. And yes, it is the most important one. And I'm just gonna come right out here and say it before we talk about it for a sec, but I could probably focus a little more on sleep. I definitely sacrifice my sleep for my workouts. Now it is important to remember that each of us are individuals. We're all gonna have different sleep needs. We're gonna have different schedules that allow us to sleep maybe a little more one day than another. But when I keep that in mind, I'm actually not a terrible sleeper. I do wake up ridiculously early so I can get my run in, but I also go to bed ridiculously early. So most of the time, I don't feel sleep deprived. But just to reiterate, sleep is probably the most important thing that you could improve on in order to become a better runner. Sleep is where it all happens. You know those intervals you're putting in, that tempo run, those runs where you come home and you're feeling utterly exhausted. Sleep is where all that training, all that goodness that you've worked towards actually soaks into your body, makes you stronger. So the next time you go out, you're gonna run a little further, a little faster. Maybe you won't feel as tired the next time. All that happens because of sleep. Oh, and I didn't tell you, but I did get the idea from this video from an article I found in Women's Running. And the article, funnily enough, is titled, How to Take Your Running to the Next Level Without Running. And of course, I will link to it in the show notes below. So ultimately, because sleep is so important, I don't want you to get into a cycle of thinking that you have to go for a run just because it's on your schedule or perhaps you wanted to go for a run. If you're finding that you're getting overly tired, perhaps it's better to get an extra hour sleep rather than get that running. That way you'll be refreshed and you'll have a more productive workout the next day or even later in the day. Now the article puts it together very succinctly and I think hits it right on the head. It says that running is a holistic endeavor. It requires a balancing of mind, body and spirit. And it's important to take care of your running so everything comes together for your running. If you focus on putting your body first, you'll see the big progress that you're working towards. So number one, most important, get more sleep get enough sleep. So first question, other than about your week of running and training, is how much sleep do you get on an average night? For me, it's six and a half hours on work nights and eight and a half hours on my days off. The second way to take your running to the next level without actually running any more or any different is your nutrition. Now you've all heard the adage, if the furnace is hot enough, it will burn anything. That may be true. That may be true for some of us more than others. And the some of us and the others are probably a younger person, a younger runner, rather than the rest of us that maybe are not as young as we used to be. That probably encompasses most of us. But anyway, I know that when I was a younger runner, it seemed like I could eat pretty much anything I wanted and it wouldn't have any ill effects, at least not on the surface. It's not really like that anymore. Or perhaps I've just become more aware of myself and my running that I notice the downsides that come with eating junk all the time. But I know that when I started paying attention to what I ate, started focusing more, being a little more aware of what I put in my body, I felt better all around. And I'm not just talking about running, I'm talking about my entire life just felt better. And look, I'm not giving any dietary advice, I'm not a dietitian, and I'm not gonna promote any one diet because we're all on our own journey, we all know what works for us and what doesn't. So I think ultimately it comes down to being mindful, be mindful of what you eat. And if you're mindful and you're paying attention to your body, you're gonna know when something doesn't work. And more importantly, you're gonna know when something does work. And overall, as long as we're eating a balanced diet, I think that's okay. But also, once you figure out what works, and what doesn't work, it's important to eat enough. Your body does require fuel in order to run most efficiently. And when you're deep into a training block, when you're training for a race, it's more likely that your body is going to be underfueled than overfueled. And there is nothing more exhausting than going into a workout when you're hungry, when you're thirsty. So take care of it. Be aware of the calories that your body needs in order to perform at its best. And that isn't just before a workout, it's after a workout when we're recovering. We've spent these workouts breaking down our bodies, but we need to build them back up. And that's done with food, food and sleep. We need to eat more, we need to sleep more. And this running gig sounds pretty good. Okay, the third way, the third way to take your running to the next level without actually running. Well, this is actually part of running, but it's form drills. And just like the name implies, these are drills to work on your form. And I gotta say, I never do form drills. It is really something that I need to do more of or some of. I can't say never, but it's so seldom that it may as well be never. And look, they don't take long. You can do them before a run, you can do them after a run. The point is to just do them. And you do this to make your normal running stride feel a little easier, to feel a little more efficient. And perhaps once you start seeing the benefits that you're getting from doing these drills, you might wanna do them even more and then just 
rake in the rewards. I'm really selling myself on this. I, I'm, I'm gonna start doing form drills. Or I'm gonna start doing at, at least one form drill twice a week. Once a week. And the article suggests that by doing these form drills, you're teaching your body to produce quick and powerful motions by exaggerating the normal motions of running. And we're talking things like high knees and butt kickers. And there's also bounding exercise to promote explosive power, hopping drills and skipping. Who doesn't like skipping? Okay, next question. I want to know what form drills you do. And I really want to know just for me, because I want to know, is there one that you've noticed pays bigger dividends than others? Because I've got to be honest, the filming of this video, I'm I am not really feeling like form drills are something that I'm gonna get into. I've been running for a long time without doing them, and even though I know I need to do them, I'm not on board yet up here. Help motivate me. Motivate me to get out there and do form drills. But before you do that, let's talk about the fourth thing that will take your running to the next level that isn't actually running, and that's cross training. Now, this is probably where the pros will deviate from us, because it's likely that they don't have enough time in their day to do other forms of training other than actually running. But you and I do. It's likely that we're not running 130, 140 miles a week. So do something that gives you a cardio benefit that may actually make you a better runner. Now we all know that running is a high impact activity. With every step we are pounding and jolting our body. So try and find something that doesn't do that but still benefits you. Cycling is a pretty easy thing to add into your training routine. Most of us have a bike or have access to a bike. I actually have a spin bike and that's where I do most of my cross training. And cycling is good because when you're spinning your legs at a high cadence it actually mimics the cadence of running. So that training actually does transfer to running. And then if you increase the resistance of turning those pedals, it turns it into a strength workout. You're actually building muscle and more muscle will make you a better runner. Or at least it'll stop your muscles from fatiguing as fast because they're bigger and they can stand up to more. If you follow me on Strava, well, now would be a good time to do that if you don't. But if you do, you probably see me doing a lot of lunchtime ellipticals. And that's when I'm at work and I spend my lunchtime on the elliptical. And I'm usually just watching YouTube or wasting time, but my legs are turning without any impact. And I absolutely love the elliptical. Well, hold on, I love the elliptical as a form of cross training. If that was the only thing I had to do, I'd probably hate it. But it's a necessary evil, so I love it. Then of course there's swimming, which doesn't really translate to running in any way, but it is a good cardio activity and it is no impact. And if you did have access to a pool, you could probably do aqua jogging, which is probably the very best cross training activity that we as runners can do. It mimics the motion of running with no impact whatsoever. And the fifth way to take your running to the next level without actually running is strength training. I know we already mentioned it, but strength training is the source. If you don't already strength train, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family to start strength training. I'm telling you it is going to make your life better, especially as we start getting older. Let's take it to an absolute extreme and we're 80, 90 years old, I want to be able to bend over and pick something off the floor. If I fall over, which even now as a young gish person, I do on a semi-regular basis, I want to be able to get up on my own. And that's where strength training is going to help. Now, keeping it a little more relevant to you and I, the reason that you're watching this video is that strength training will make you a stronger runner. It's going to develop those muscles. It's going to develop those supporting muscles that aren't actually built up by running. And they will all work together to make you a better, a more well-rounded and more fatigue resistant runner. And look, it doesn't have to be much. It is a very very rare day that I do strength work for more than 20 minutes at a time. Now I will usually squeeze in 20 minutes of strength work probably four or five times a week but I like getting it in bite-sized amounts. Now if you are a gym rat you probably love going to the gym and just crushing the weights but that's not me. I'm a runner and I really like running first. If I didn't have to do strength training it's unlikely I would but I know how beneficial it is and that's why I do it. So guys let me know about you. Let me know which of these things that you are doing that is taking your running to the next level that isn't actually running. Now that we've spoken about all those things that are not actually running let's talk about my my running and I had a pretty good week of running. But we're not going to get too far into it because actually this is where this video is going to end. If you do want to see my week of running, please go to Strava. Everything has been uploaded there, but I am traveling this week and I couldn't be sure that the Wi-Fi where I'm going is going to be good enough to upload the video. So I uploaded this ahead of time, but I already know I had a good week of running. Thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. Don't forget to let me know about your week of running. Remember, successes and setbacks. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.